<laughs> my mom, she gifted, she loved these books, she gifted them to us and many other people have been blessed. And I was like thinking, oh, what can I say about my mom? And I found a nice poem. I'm going to read it to you. It's not all scripturally sound, so bear with me, but it's beautiful all the same. A Mother's Rock. The young mother set her foot on the path of life. Is this a long way, she asked. And the guide said, yes, and the way is hard, and you'll be old before you reach the end of it. But the end will be better, will be better than the beginning. But the young mother was happy, and she could not believe that anything could be better than her tears. So she played with her children, gathered flowers for them along the way, and bathed them in the clear stream. The sun shone on them, and the young mother cried, Nothing will ever be lovelier than this. Then the night came with a storm. I remember my mom protecting us. The path was dark. The children shook with fear and cold. The and the mother drew them close, covering them with her mantle. The children said, Mother, we are not afraid, for you are near, and no one can harm us. When the morning came, there was a hill ahead. The children climbed and grew weary, and the mother was weary. But at all times she said to the children, A little patience, and we will be there. So the children climbed, and when they reached the top, they said, Mother, we could not have done it without you. The mother, when she lay down at night, looked up at the stars and said, This is a better day than the last. For my children have learned fortitude in the face of hardness. Yesterday, I gave them courage, and my mom did. She gave us courage. Today, I have given them strength. She did that too. The next day brought strange clouds which darkened the earth, clouds of war and hate and evil. The children broke and stumbled, and the mother said, Look up, lift your eyes to the light. And the children looked and saw above the clouds an everlasting glory that guided them beyond the darkness. That night the mother said, This is the best day of all, of all for I have shown my children God. The days went on, the weeks and the months and the years. The mother grew old, and she was frail and bent. But her children were tall and strong and walked with courage. When, they, when the way was rough, they looked at her, for she was as light as a feather. At last they came to a hill beyond which they could see a shining road and golden gates flung wide. Mother said, I have reached the end of my journey, and now I know the end is better than the beginning, for my children can walk alone, and their children after them. Although we can walk alone, we still have Jesus. He is our strength. He will, he will hold us. The children said, you will always walk with me, mother, even when you have gone through the gates. They stood and watched her as she went on alone, and the gates closed after her. They said, we cannot see her, but she is with us still. A mother like ours is more than a memory. She is a living presence. We will always hear her voice. Your mother is always with you. She is the whisper of the leaves as you walk down the street. She is the smell of the bleach in your freshly laundered socks. She is the cool hand on your brow when you are not well. Your mother lives inside your laughter. I hear it in my aunt. <laughs> She is crystallizing every teardrop. She is the place you came from, your first home, and she is the map you follow your every step. She is your first love and your first heartbreak, and nothing on earth can separate you. Not time, not space, not even death. I am going to call my siblings. This might be a surprise to some, but we're going to say how great they are together. all the siblings in law. You gotta help us.
color of skin, or whatever. Your physical, your mental state, you were family. There are things that I remember that completely confirm this. I remember living in the campground. I will say, and my siblings will say the same thing, the best summer we ever had. Living in the campground, there was many a time where Ada's friends, Bertha's friends, friends of each one of the kids in the family would show up. Sitting in the old screen tent, sitting by the campfire, in the A-frame, wherever. Sometimes down at the dock, wherever it was. Mom would always have a meal, no matter the condition she was in. Mom would always have a meal out of that old camper. Even the neighbors would come and sit with Mom. We all remember Pat. <laughs> whether she was sober or whether she was drunk, she would come by. I can't remember the song she would sing, but we all know, I'm pretty sure. The other thing I remember is us boys lived or slept in the basement when we lived at mom and dad's in the new part of the house and we could always hear when someone was walking across the floor on the porch. Dad and mom sitting at the kitchen table and dad would holler, come on in. Make yourself at home. And if you weren't hungry, she'd say, do you want a coffee? And sometimes she'd say, go to the store, get some coffee, <laughs> get some cookies. And dad would say, pull up a chair, have a seat. Sometimes he'd say, pull up a chair, sit on the floor, stay a while. We always knew she was talking to someone and it was important. They would migrate to the porch and sit and talk. Now, I don't know if Jacob Haycock is here, but I remember him the very first time Mom gave him a hug. <laughs> and he was so embarrassed that she would say, I love you, handsome. <laughs> Jacob always had a comeback, but he didn't have one for that. <laughs> she started calling him son. Everyone was her children, no matter who you were. The other thing that was marking my mom, who she was. I remember when dad started hauling loads from peepers. And dad would look and he would see these guys and they're here for six, seven, eight to 10 months at a time. And they held a very special place in her heart because she knew what it was to have a loved one off providing for the family and to be away from family for such a long time. When we would go pick them up on Sundays for gospel meetings, if there wasn't enough room in the car, she'd say, send another one. I have a kid here in the house to drive. Send another one. Johnny Drill and I can attest to the many squished rides on the way home from Dorchester. The other thing that she would do for them Often on Saturdays, she would say, Hey, make sure you let them know this week Saturday I'm going to bring a meal. And she would bring a barn raising stew. What do you that was her meal. No matter what, for mom, you were never too big, nor too small, too dark, or too light to be served. By mom. Just one verse I want to read to each one of the family. It has become very, very close to me. In the past few days, I have thought about it many times in the past as well. 2 Thessalonians 1, or 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, or 4, sorry, and verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds 
to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be ever with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. One thing that Mom always wanted, and Mom always joyed to see, was sinners saved by the grace of God. If you come into our doors as family, friends, whichever you are, we're not perfect. God's working on us. It's a slow process. Some slower than others. But I want you to know this. We've been saved by grace. And that same grace, if we have the privilege, we would love to show to each one of you. And if you're not saved, I plead with you and I implore you, please accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's the most important decision in your life you'll ever make. Don't believe it. This is something that is real. She's gone. She's with her Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you are not saved, and you die without Christ, much more tears will be shed for you. Because you will never know. You will always be separated from God. You will never know. God personally. So I pray and I implore that you would accept him this morning.